Good morning. Today we celebrate the Feast of Christ the King, and Mass will be celebrated for the repose of the soul of Dorothy Phil. It's good to have you all with us as we begin this celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty King and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh in splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep, as a shepherd tends his flock. When he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out, the strayed I will bring back, the injured I will bind up, the sick I will heal, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. The, the Lord, Lord is my shepherd, shepherd. There, there is nothing I shall want. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is, is nothing, nothing I shall want. want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is, is nothing, nothing I, I shall want. want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The, the Lord, Lord is my shepherd, shepherd. There, there is nothing, nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. 
For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ, then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Father, may I have your blessing. May Almighty God bless you that you will worthily proclaim the gospel in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory with to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne, and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then they will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill, and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or ill, or in prison, and not minister to your need? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Well, good morning and welcome to this video mass. And uh, I hope that you had a wonderful uh, Thanksgiving this past Thursday and glad you're here with us. Uh, this week is a special week. It is the last Sunday of the Catholic calendar. We start Advent next Sunday. But this is a wonderful Sunday in that this is Christ the King Sunday. We get to honor Christ as the King, the King of the universe. And what I like about this is this gospel is one of those from Jesus that there's really not much in the way of minced words. He gets right to the point and tells us he will judge. He will come back. And there's going to be a separation. Those that are believers, those that belong to his flock, that know him, will go off to eternal life. And the others destined for damnation. And one of the things that I, I 
had a recurring uh, theme as I was reading this, and it is, you know, we talk about this eternal damnation, and I was thinking, gosh, what would that really be like? And it came, it just, the recurrent theme was the absence of God, the total and absolute absence of God. Love, grace, mercy. And so as I was reading this, and the point that I want to, to start us off on is that this is very real, and there are real risks for us that we may not see, if we don't follow Christ, may not see that eternal salvation that we long for. So let's get into this. What Jesus is saying is that, hey, there are things that I want to see you do. There are things that I want you to evidence in your life that speak to your Christian lifestyle, your, your belief in me. So before we even get to actions, we need to really know Christ. And to know Christ, there's a couple of things that we need to do. And the first and foremost is it's got to be personal. You know, we all have our own will. We all have our own desires, our own wants. But what we need to do is to set those aside and say, Christ, what is your will for my life? What do you want me to do? That way, I have a, a head and a heart for Christ. I know at least somewhat what the will is that I'm called to live. What kind of lifestyle am I called to live? The other is just what you're doing today. Join Mass. Learn. That's where we, that's where we develop that rich context of our Christian faith. And so when we do that, we have this head full of knowledge. We have this heart for Christ. And in Christ, in the, gospel, in the Old Testament, uh, God says, I'm going to take away your stony hearts. I'm going to give you natural hearts. And so now we've got to talk about these actions. If we have this, this mind for Christ, if we have this heart for Christ, our legs are going to follow. There's going to be this natural outcropping, this natural evidence of the fruit of the Spirit where we are loving where we do extend grace, where we do extend mercy. You know, uh, just a uh, thing I was thinking about on the way over here is that, you know, I am really competitive and sometimes I hate traffic. No, I always hate traffic. But what really irks me is when somebody's trying to cut in and I've been in a line for a mile. Well. At times, I've been kind of nasty and kind of sped up so they couldn't get in. But as a Christian, I could step back and extend some grace here, a gift that's not warranted. Just step back, let them get in the lane, and move on. Now, as silly as that may sound, I don't know what's going on in that other driver's head. They could be trying to get to a hospital to see somebody. They could just be having a really bad day and just needed a little bit of simple grace. But I know that there's a number of folks in our community, maybe even joining us here uh, on this mass, that may be limited in the way they can interact uh, with others. So here's what I will tell you. The best example to follow is Jesus Christ himself. Christ nailed to the cross. He was incapacitated. But what did he do? He prayed. He set this marvelous example for us that no matter what, we can always pray. And what did he do when he was on the cross? He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He wanted to extend mercy to those that put him on that cross. So you too can follow that lead and pray. Become that prayer warrior to pray for others, to pray for salvation, to pray that as many of your friends, neighbors in the community can be considered in that flock, a member of Christ's flock when the judgment comes. You know, if you're listening in today, 
uh, and you've stepped away from church, and maybe you're just starting to get back into it, explore it. Or maybe you were raised in a home that uh, really wasn't uh, religious, and you're starting to explore. And you're hearing that voice saying, hey, I'd like to know a little more about that. Don't ignore that. Reach out to your local church or, or feel free to call Notre Dame. I'd love to talk to you about you know, Christ's salvation that he has for your life. Because my ultimate um, prayer and hope for you is that when the judgment comes, Jesus is going to look at you and say, I know you. I know you. Come on. You're a member of the flock. You're a member of this family. Sit here at my right. And God bless you. And now, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us bring our prayers and petitions before God, our Almighty Father. For all members of the church, may Christ our King reign always in our hearts and in our every word and deed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For civic leaders throughout the world, may God's abundant and unceasing love be their guide in serving those they represent. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who suffer in any way, May the peace of Christ beyond all understanding bring them healing and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all gathered here today, may the Holy Spirit sanctify us in our lives of discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For Dorothy Phil, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for all those who have died, May they soon rest in the arms of the Good Shepherd. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the King of our minds and the King of our hearts, the King of our lives. Help us to live accordingly. Help us to serve him in all things and help us to be aware of and take care of the needs of our brothers and sisters. We offer these and all our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, 
For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. forever. Spirit and contrite heart, we by you, O Lord, and may I sacrifice in your sight and stay be pleasing to you. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your you. spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right and just. and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption, and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we offer the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for, your, and, for, and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Dorothy Phil, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom the, power, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. And now, since we cannot have regular communion together, please pray with me this prayer so that we may have spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you at this moment sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Before that, let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying in or glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And before we do leave, there is an announcement. And that is, as you know, Monday is Cyber Monday, a day in which people spend all sorts of money online shopping. 
but Tuesday is Giving Tuesday. And as we have done the last few years, uh, our parish project for Giving Tuesday is uh, to help pay for this production. It costs us $300 a week, and I think it's well worth the money, but anything you can donate over the course of the year is greatly appreciated. And it would be good for us, at least for planning purposes, if you would uh, check the information on the bottom of the screen, go to the Church of Notre Dame and contribute what you would like uh, for the continuation of this ministry. It would be very much appreciated over the course of this next year. So thank you for that in advance. This last week I was on vacation, and as always, it was really nice. Uh, I went to York, Pennsylvania, which I know is not Mer America's vacation land, but my brother lives there, and a couple of my nephews live there, and all with each with their wives and children. And um, it was a really nice trip. Uh, it's always interesting when you go to a new environment. I had mass at uh, St. Joseph's Church in York, Pennsylvania, and my sister-in-law's evaluation of my sermon was 12 minutes, which apparently is too long for a sermon. Uh, there was another time we were playing oh, Mario Kart. I went with my great nephews, and I decided to be a character named Wario, W-A-R-I-O, who is somehow related to Lu Luigi and Mario, except he's much bigger and dressed in yellow. And my youngest nephew said, Uncle Dick, he's fat, just like you. And that was nice. Uh, so I destroyed him in the race. But um, anyway, it was a nice trip, and it is great to be home. So I hope you all have had a nice Thanksgiving, and I hope you enjoy this upcoming week. Next week, we'll begin Advent, and that's when things become a little bit more somber, but not too much, because there's this joyful expectation uh, in the season which we're supposed to be looking forward to the coming of well, the Prince of Peace, uh, the light of the world, Jesus Christ. So that'll begin next week and I look forward to being, or to you being a part of our celebration. Have a good week, have a good day. He is exalted.